Hey guys, Seventh here. I am back with a new video. Real shocking, right? With everything going on out there in the world from you know what, that which shall not be named, I know a lot of you are cooped up at home, and all those shows that you had whiled away the hours at work wishing that you had the time to just marathon to your little heart's content, I'm betting you've gone through a lot of them by now, huh? And with the dearth of content that's been on YouTube lately, I thought I'd throw my hat in the ring and come back and make some stuff for you guys to watch. I've been playing beat-em-ups since I was a kid. I love the genre. I never get bored with it. I'm always looking for new ones. And with Streets of Rage 4 supposedly coming out sometime in the near future, I've been looking around for things to tide me over until that comes out. What else have I got to do? And I found a number of beat-em-ups on PSN that I had never even heard of. So I've got some beat-em-ups for you guys to look at. Now, just because I've included them in this list doesn't mean that I am recommending them, okay? These are just seven beat-em-ups for you to look at and for you to decide if that looks like something you'll enjoy, okay? So don't blame me if you buy one of these and you think it's a stinker, all right? This is all subjective. So without further ado, here's seven PSN beat-em-ups you may have never heard of. Coming in at number seven, we have Fightin' Rage. Fightin' Rage I really like a lot. It has that classic 16-bit look to it. And as you can see, you just take right to it. It plays just like playing any of the classic 16-bit beat-em-ups you might have played at home or in the arcades back in the day. The game just feels so right, so tight and precise, so classic. I can't really explain why all the enemies are cats and dogs and rats. I'm assuming it's some kind of weird post-apocalyptic thing. I skip past the story. I know, I know, I'm so bad. Bad seventh. There's also local co-op, online co-op, leaderboards, challenges, it's all there. You can switch between a interlaced classic CRT looking mode or this current clean and crisp current generation mode with just the drop of a hat. It's very easy to switch back and forth. It's just such a good game, guys. Very good. Each character has its own special, unique power move, and when you build up your attack meter to full, you can set those special moves off in addition to a hyper mode that just makes you attack faster and your attacks take more damage. And of course, what would a fighting game be without boss fights? Some of the bosses are smaller like this, some of them are quite large, but each one provides its own unique challenge. You're definitely going to have a lot of fun with this one, so really, what are you waiting for? Hop on to PSN, or if you prefer to play on PC, hop on Steam, but hop on to PSN and grab you a copy of Fight and Rage. It's good for what ails you. Coming in at number six is Foul Play. Now, I'm going to say right up front here, this one is a little bit different. I've never been a huge fan of this kind of flash animation animation style, but this one is so different I had to put it on the list. Basically, it's a beat-em-up that acts as though it's a play that a live audience is watching. And the better you do, the more the crowd reacts. And if you can get the crowd's appreciation of what they're seeing up to 100%, it both boosts how you're able to play and it helps out in unlocking additional tactics and combat moves and what have you. So there's also a little bit of an almost RPG-like progression system to the game. True, the fighting can get a little bit repetitive at first, but the more moves you unlock, the more fun it gets. So it's one that you really have to stick with for the long haul, and then it really starts to uh, show the rewards, so to speak. The crowd interaction, you really start to get into hearing the crowds getting louder and louder and cheering and applauding and rooting you on as you devastate guys on stage. 
This is one that I'm sure a lot of you passed on initially when you saw the art style. I'm not going to lie, I did too, but I have learned the errors of my ways. This one has won me over, and I think it'll win some of you over too, so why don't you give it a try? You might just be pleasantly surprised with this one. Coming in at number 5, we have Gekido Kentaro's Revenge. It's my understanding that this is a spin-off title that's based on the Gintama anime. Uh, I think I've got that right. I've never really watched Gintama, so I can't say for 100%, but I believe that's where this comes from. That being said, of the fighting games that you'll be seeing in this video, this is probably my least favorite. It's a little bit quirky. For starters, the controls on it are kind of switched. Your primary attack button is the circle instead of the square. And I didn't immediately find a way to switch it to a fighting control scheme that I found a little bit more traditional for US audiences. I assume that perhaps where this game comes from, the circle button is the attack button by default. I'm not entirely sure on that. But the graphics are great. The music is not 16-bit style, which is kind of off-putting for this type of game, but you learn to live with it. My biggest complaint with this one is, of course, that control scheme, getting used to swapping everything as to how you're used to playing one of these. That and the fact that the enemies just tend to spawn right in front of you and don't give you a whole lot of warning. You can also really easily fall into pits. There's several sections of this that really require some platforming, but the controls were not really made for platforming. So there's going to be a lot of moments where you have to well-timed jump onto a platform only to find yourself falling to your death. And it's going to happen a lot because you have these indoor areas where you have to unlock secret doors, go up and down ladders, hop from one platform to the next looking for keys, and when you're falling to your death every other jump, especially when it's in the dark so you can't even tell for sure that there is a platform to jump to, yeah, you're going to have a little bit of frustration there. But if you are a fan of this type of game, especially if you're a fan of the anime that it's based on, it's not very expensive, so why not just give it a try? Just saying, I warned you. Coming in at number four, we have I Am The Hero, and I'm actually kind of excited to tell you about this one. I'm sure this is one most of you have skipped by, simply because of the fact that it was published by Rattalaika Games. For those of you who don't know, Rattalaika specializes in publishing smaller, lower budget titles that are primarily there to give you easy platinums. Most of their games, you don't even have to complete them to plat the game, and most of them are in the $5 to $6 range, so a lot of their sales comes from people buying them to get the easy plats. But that is totally not the case with this game. First of all, it has this really cool art style where it's a quasi almost 3D look where it kind of is at an angle, so it almost looks like you're it's running towards you instead of just straight up left to right that's kind of angled and it just gives it this really cool off-kilter look. It's got a hand-drawn style and just like with Foul Play, this is a game where depending on how well you do, you earn points where you can use those points to unlock additional combat moves. So the farther you get along in the game, the more ways you have to beat people up. I was still learning when you were watching this footage, so there was a lot of moves that I had unlocked that I wasn't using because I didn't know that I had them. It's got great graphics, it's got great music, it has a whole unique look to it while still having that retro feel and the controls. Once you get used to them, oh man, it's a lot of fun to play. If anything, I'm just really surprised at the quality of this title. This is not the kind of thing that Rattalaika usually puts out. 
I know they're not the developers, they're just the publishers, but still, you're not used to seeing this kind of thing out of a Rattalaika game. And it's not a game where you're just going to play it for 15 minutes and earn the platinum either. This one makes you work for it, folks. So if you're looking for that quick, easy platinum, this is not the one. You need to stick to the foxy lands and things like that from Rattalaika, okay? This one is an actual challenge, and you're going to have a lot of fun playing it if beat-em-ups like this are your thing. Coming in at number three, we have Knights of Valor. Now, quick disclaimer, everybody. This is a free-to-play game. It is also online multiplayer, and it has a lot of microtransactions in it. I'm not even going to lie. But if you're looking for just something to pass the time and you have no intentions of spending any money, you can certainly play this game without it and earn your stuff the hard way because you're going to be upgrading your weapons, you're going to be upgrading your armor, your skills, your stats. It's a very RPG light beat em up and just like with some of the previous games on this list, the more you play, the more moves you have to work with. Now I will say this, there doesn't really seem to be a whole lot in the way of enemy variety in this title. It does have multiple boss fights. It's got plenty of scenarios for you to go through. There's branching paths. The graphics are nice. The music is nice. The gameplay gets better as you go along. It's pretty basic when you first start out. But, yeah, you'll be fighting a lot of the same soldiers from level to level with occasional unique mini-bosses like what you see here with these uh, autonomous wooden guys that you're having to beat up. Otherwise, you're seeing a lot of soldiers that look exactly the same, just like what you're seeing on screen right now. But then again, when you're not paying anything to play it, you don't really want to complain too much, right? It is online multiplayer, so... If you want to play with folks you've never played with before, perfect strangers, then sure, why not? Have some fun. It's free. Anyway, that's, uh, that's Knights of Valor. Coming in at number two... We've got Raging Justice. Oh god, <laughs> Raging Justice indeed. This game really wants to be Final Fight with a kind of weird, perverted sense of humor with the addition being that you can knock a person into a stunned state and then arrest them by pressing the circle button which I didn't realize at the time because I wasn't paying attention to the prompt that was on the screen. But surprisingly enough, you don't really get to do that that often because you'll often end up just knocking them out cold before ever getting the option to arrest them. What you're seeing is pretty much what you get. It has a very almost Clay Fighters look to it, a kind of a... I don't know, it's it's like they wanted it to look like claymation or stop motion animation. That being said, if these were done with actual claymation figures, it's some of the most detailed that I've ever seen, no doubts about that. It makes it look like someone took action figures and did stop motion animation with them. I've never quite seen a game that looks exactly like this as far as beat-em-ups go. It does have co-op. You can play with a friend, obviously. The question really boils down to whether or not your friends will want to play this. Of course, one man's trash is another man's treasure. So, <laughs> this may very well be right up your alley. Who can say? You can actually pick up shotguns in this and blow your opponents away with a shotgun, which is not something you see entirely too often in a game of this type. I was surprised. You can also pick up dynamite and throw it and blow them up with it, which is also 
something you don't see every day. It also has your typical hookers and big fat guys that run fast and charge at you straight out of Streets of Rage. So there's a lot of traditional elements here. There's a lot of influences. You just got to get used to how it controls and that wonky art style. And you can get some enjoyment out of it, I'm sure. I'm willing to bet that it plays a lot better with a friend, but try as I might, I could not talk 8th into playing this one with me. So, yeah! Raging Justice. Go get your rage on, right? Yeah. <laughs> And finally, coming in at number one, you've got Slaps and Beans, or more correctly, Terrence Hill and Bud Spencer in Slaps and Beans. Now, I've got to give a little bit of history with this one if you don't know who Terrence Hill and Bud Spencer are. Running from the late 60s into the 80s and even 90s, you had a couple of Italian actors who changed their names to more American-sounding names of Terrence Hill and Bud Spencer, Bud is the big burly one and Terrence Hill is the skinny one on screen here. And they made a number of action comedies, most of them westerns. A couple that you might have heard of were uh, My Name is Trinity and Trinity is Still My Name. These were, again, comedy westerns, comedy action films. They were very popular over there and several of them were released on VHS in the US eventually and I'm sure at some point back in the 80s for any of you who are as old as I am you might have rented a couple of them or seen some of them on HBO at like 3 in the morning I know my first exposure to the comedy of Terrence Hill was a movie I saw when I was a kid that was called Super Fuzz aka Super Snooper and it was about a cop who acquires superpowers and his personal kryptonite was the color red. If he saw the color red, he lost all of his powers. It's a pretty wacky movie, but that was my first exposure to Terrence Hill. I don't believe Bud Spencer was in that one. I can't really remember. But they were in most of these movies together, and I don't really know how or why this game ended up on PSN in the States, since most people don't know who the hell these two guys are. I think it's a kind of a situation similar to the Asterix 3D game that is on PSN right now for $50 that I really want to play because I loved Asterix as a kid. They used to show Asterix dubbed on the Disney Channel when I was little. Uh, same thing with Lucky Luke. Lucky Luke is a very famous comic book and cartoon character, a, uh, a cowboy, a gunfighter over in Europe, particularly in France, not so well known here, but once again, it was dubbed and released on Disney Channel in the 80s when I was a kid, so I know who Lucky Luke is. There's video games based on uh, this kind of stuff, but it's just weird to see it show up in the United States when the average American is not going to know who Terrence Hill and Bud Spencer are, or Lucky Luke, or Asterix. You get the point. Anyway, this is a really wacky fighter. Uh, you've got moments where the guys you're beating up will drop pitchers of beer, and you can pick up the beer and drink it to replenish your health. You can kick a guy in the nuts and force him to bend over, and you can do a leapfrog over him to then kick him in the ass. Uh, you're rescuing damsels in distress. You're getting into big bar fight brawls. It's all the kind of stuff you'd expect to see in a Western. You also have a special move that actually comes from the Trinity movies, and that's the slap attack. Basically, controlling Terrence Hill, there are certain moments where you can press a button, and he will just repeatedly start smacking the crap out of whoever is in front of him. It's absolutely hilarious, but it actually is inspired from the Trinity movies, because there are scenes in those where he would go face to face with a guy 
and he could smack him in the face and grab his own guns from him and point them at him, put them back in the holster and smack him again before the other guy could even move. And it was done with speeding up the footage, but it was funny then, and it sure is funny in this game as well. It's also got little mini-game things like this, which was supposed to be that exact thing, a slap game, and I missed it because I wasn't paying attention. But I've never seen a beat-em-up like this, ever. It's just so weird, and I had to show it. I'm not going to say that it's as fun as something like Fight and Rage, because it's not. It's it's weird in the way that it controls. I mean, you can pick up chairs and smack people over the head with chairs. You can grab bottles and break bottles over their heads, throw barrels at them, you name it. It's just, there's the slap move right there. <laughs> it's just absolutely bizarre. And... The fact that it got made just blows my mind, and the fact that I can appreciate it because I watched these Terrence Hill movies when I was a kid just makes it all the more special for me. So I had to make it number one on the list, although this list is not in order of quality. I just wanted to show this one before the video ended because good God. Anyway, there is Terrence Hill and Bud Spencer in Slaps and Beans. Do give it a try, shan't you? And that was my list for today. If you like these list style videos, let me know in the comments and I'll make more of them. Cause God knows I got plenty of PSN games to go through. I've been so bored during this whole quarantine thing that uh, I actually have bought so many PSN games I now have in excess of 500 of them. So if you like this content, Please let me know. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, drop me a comment, let me know, and trust me, I can make plenty more. Until next time, this is 7th.